To help get out of debt, Sound Transit creates more debt. It's time for another episode of Bells and Whistles. Hello everyone, Bill Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Railway Track and Structures Magazine, with a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending August 27th. The Senate is now hoping a group of moderate Democrats in the House will help move the bipartisan $1 trillion infrastructure bill. Senator Joe Manchin issued a stern warning about the repercussions if the House and Speaker Nancy Pelosi continue to demand for the passage of a $3.5 trillion spending bill in the Senate. Members of Congress started trickling in from an August recess on August 23rd. Meanwhile, the House Democrats in favor of moving the infrastructure bill in the coming days are in a standoff with Pelosi. Some believe there simply are not enough votes in the House to pass the infrastructure bill if it is not directly tied to the spending package. Pelosi was expected to adjust the budget resolution on August 24th. However, the price tag alone might prevent Pelosi from getting the votes she needs for the budget package. The Gorge Act, passed back in 1986, established the Columbia River Gorge as a national scenic area. The scene that played out in a courtroom on August 24th gave BNSF the power to expand anyway. BNSF had originally sued because it wanted to carry out a track expansion project and Clark County Washington officials said a permit was required. The Class 1 said federal law trumps local zoning ordinances. A federal judge sided with BNSF, prompting a group led by the Columbia River Gorge Commission and Friends of the Columbia River Gorge to appeal. The plaintiffs believe the Gorge Act protected the area from any kind of construction. The Ninth Circuit Court disagreed on August 24th, stating that the Gorge Act was not a nationwide environmental statute like the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. More details are emerging of the change orders on the Southwest LRT project in Minnesota. Federal Transit Administrator Nuria Fernandez toured the construction site on August 25th, but did not give any indication that the federal government will be providing any more funding for the project. If change orders continue, local and federal funding will be the only way out. The price of the Southwest LRT project now sits at $2.2 billion, making it the most expensive in Minnesota history. The Metropolitan Council okayed the use of the final $200 million available for the work. The Metropolitan Council also has rearranged work on the project, moving some of it to be addressed further down the line. Fernandez said project construction is 50% complete and almost 100% of the contracts have been awarded, so cost uncertainty, she believed, has been reduced. Sound Transit believes you have to spend money to save money. On August 26, the Board of Directors approved another $4.2 million for light rail consultants to help find ways to take cash off the books. Sound Transit is still looking at a funding gap that is $6.5 billion wide. Sound Transit has paid almost $800,000 to TriUnity Engineering and Management for three reports detailing how the agency found itself in this financial nightmare. The examination revealed, among other things, that Sound Transit chooses to crack down on costs and risks in the final engineering and construction phases, which is too late. Rising right-of-way costs also were a problem, and the agency did not use real estate specialists wisely during early estimating. Well, that's a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending August 27th. For the latest news, go to www.rtands.com. You can also find us on social media. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great weekend, everyone.